turning my car into a rocket ship, filming an entire travel film on a potato. I buy dirt travel versus turning my car into a baby price. That's actually a pretty good idea. You should write that down. I think when it comes to creating travel films, a lot of people see planning before the shoot as kind of like an optional add-on to make it that much better, when in reality it's a completely indispensable, 100% necessary part of the process. So today I wanted to not only tell you that, that you need to do it, but also show you my entire process for planning out a travel film before I actually go out and shoot it. Everything from coming up with a good idea to making that into a full-fledged detailed outline, shot lists, location scouting, storyboards, absolutely everything. Throughout this video, I'm gonna be using a few examples from the Blue Ridge, which is my most recent travel film that I posted on this channel a few weeks ago, and I'm gonna be going through like my big planning document that I made for that video. And if you want to download that document in full and follow along with this video and have that document to go over in detail, you can consider becoming a channel member. You just go to the link in the description or click that little join button on my channel and you'll be able to download that entire document. There are also some other perks like being able to download raw footage from my videos, having access to longer, more detailed, extended tutorials than you get in my public YouTube videos like this one. That being said, let's just jump right into my process, which of course, as you could probably assume, has to begin with an idea. Every single video you make needs to begin with some sort of idea or concept that will then inform every other subsequent decision that you make. I'll begin by taking that idea and just building it out into more of an outline, starting out with just some basic like bullet points, no particular organization yet. And I use Google Docs for this because it's easy to access the document on my phone or any other device that's not my main computer. And it's also easy to like share the document with other people if I'm collaborating on the video with someone else. Basically in this stage, I'm just jotting down any ideas I will possibly have around this project about story points, the visual style, of the film, locations I might wanna shoot at, potential brands or clients to partner with to make the video happen, any ideas, no organization. That scramble of bullet points will eventually be organized into a proper detailed outline of the entire video progressing through it. And this is really important to be able to visualize the different sequences that make up the film and how I'm gonna transition between those sequences and the different events that happen in each sequence. What's the beginning of the video? What's the end of the video? Making a detailed outline is the best way to visualize that for me. Throughout the process of creating that outline of the concept and story, I'm also gonna be making kind of a visual outline or a mood board, you could say, under that. And basically to do that, I'm just screenshotting, you know, photos on Instagram or like frames from movies or other films and throwing them all in a big, you know, kind of mood board on that document to have like a visual reference for kind of the visual style and cinematography inspiration, what I want the color scheme to look like, certain locations I might want to shoot at and how I want to shoot them. Just a big visual mood board basically of the project. Having a collection of visual inspiration like this that outlines the style and tone of the project is also really beneficial later on if you want to say make a pitch deck and show a client, you know, the visual idea of the project in hopes of getting it funded. It's going to be really helpful to have this pool of images that show what you're trying to create. Now that we've really hammered out a concrete outline of the concept and visuals behind this project, it's time to start actually planning out 
the shoot, starting out with location scouting. And when I do location scouting, I'm sometimes just looking for what's cool in the area that we're shooting, but more often than not, I'm looking for location to fit a specific shot idea or a specific part of the story. So for say, Sounds of the Pacific Northwest, I was not only looking for what are the coolest trails in Olympic National Park, what are the coolest views in North Cascades National Park, but also I knew because I had already made that outline of the story and concept that we were gonna need a cool A-frame Airbnb that we could fly an FPV drone through. We were gonna need an alpine lake to shoot the ending sequence of the video at and set up a tent for those shots. We were gonna need a fire tower. All these different things that I deliberately hunted out online, not just because they were cool, but because they had a point in that outline and in that story. My travel videos tend to have more of an outdoorsy theme, so I'm usually looking for different hikes and trails and wilderness areas to film. So the best resource for me to do that is All Trails. By using All Trails for location scouting, I'm able to get a ton of useful information that I can't find anywhere else. So I'm able to look at these places we're gonna be shooting and find specific information about the trails, photos of the area from people who've been there recently, trail maps. You're also able to download satellite maps so you don't get lost when you're hiking. You can get exact directions to the trailhead so you know where you're actually going. They're not affiliated with my channel at all, just a really useful resource that I use for location scouting on pretty much any project I do. Throughout this location scouting process, I'm not only looking for dope ass views and places that are gonna serve the story I want to tell, but I'm also looking specifically for hidden gems, trying to find those lesser known areas that aren't as heavily trafficked and don't get as much attention on social media. It's a lot easier and just more enjoyable to shoot without a ton of people in the way. And your video is also gonna be a lot more interesting and unique without having you know, these very recognizable touristy spots all over it. Finding hidden gems like this, frankly, just requires a ton of research. You just have to put in those hours and sift through more information online than anyone else is going to. But if you put in that time and just push through it, it will be so beneficial for the project that you end up creating. All right, so now we've got the story and concept down. We've got a visual style planned out and we know where we're shooting. Now we just need to decide when. We need to schedule out the shoot. And this is so important because I see so many people go on a shoot and fail to schedule out and prepare for what they're actually gonna be doing when. And then they have to spend hours just sitting in their Airbnb trying to figure out what they're gonna do next. And it's just such a preventable and significant waste of time. By taking some time to really thoroughly schedule out the shoot beforehand, you're not only preventing yourself from wasting time doing that on location, but you're also gonna be able to make sure you have time to get everything you need because the last thing you want is to be on that last day of shooting realizing that you only have one sunrise left and you have two sunrise scenes to shoot. That's the situation that you absolutely don't want to be in. So how do we prevent that? Well, when you're scheduling out a shoot, I would always recommend giving yourself way more time than you think you'll need. If you think this sequence is gonna take you an hour to shoot, give yourself three or four hours. If it's gonna be a two hour drive to get from location A to location B, give yourself three or four hours to do that drive. In addition to giving yourself more time for each task than you think you'll actually use, it can also be really beneficial to just add some completely unused, unscheduled time onto a part of your shoot, like adding one or two days on the end of your week-long trip that you're not scheduling anything. Because let's face it, things are always going to go wrong on location. You're always gonna find yourself pushing things to the next day when something doesn't go to plan or the conditions aren't right for the scene. For the Blue Ridge, I had to visit this one location like three, maybe four separate times before I got the conditions that I needed for that part of the video. When we were shooting Sounds of the Pacific Northwest in Washington, we had to push off this blue hour sunrise shoot like three days because we just didn't get the right conditions and we weren't able to access the right locations. It may feel like a waste of time in the moment to not be filling up every single minute of your trip and seemingly making the absolute most of it, but it will be so beneficial when things inevitably go wrong to have that extra time at the end and be able to push things off 
if you have to. To schedule out my shoots, I just use a Google Calendar for each project and plan out all these different blocks for all the things we need to do. I also color code it a bit. So like driving, I make purple and shooting, I make red. You don't really need to do that, but it kind of helps you to visualize what's actually going on quickly. And because it's a Google Calendar, I can easily just move these blocks around to reschedule the shoot when I inevitably have to. All right, so we've got the logistical stuff down. We know where we're shooting, when we're gonna be shooting there. Now let's dive a little more back into the specific creative tasks, storyboards and shot lists. Now let's be clear, this isn't like a narrative short film where I'm making a shot list of every single shot that's going to be in the video. Rather, I'm just making sure to make a detailed shot list for specific sequences in the video where missing a shot would be a problem. So for the Blue Ridge, for the most part, the specific shots in the video were really based on just what I captured and what looked best when I got to the location. That's usually how these travel shoots go and that's usually the best way to approach them. But for this ending sequence at the very end of the video, there's a very specific story and a very specific progression and if one of these shots were left out, it would hurt that story and the message wouldn't come across as clearly and as strongly. So I have a detailed shot list of every single clip I need to complete this part of the video. The way I format my shot lists is by using a two column table, once again, just in Google Docs. In the left column, I write all the different clips I'm gonna need to get in the order that they occur in the video. And then I move those over to the right side and place them in the order that I'm going to shoot them because oftentimes I'm shooting this stuff out of order. I break that table up into chunks based on each sequence. So I have like kind of a separate little list of shots for each different part of the video that's gonna be shot at a given time. And I might make a few additional notes about each shot, like what lens I'm gonna use, you know, what lighting there needs to be, what camera angle I'm gonna shoot from. But for the most part, this is just a list of important shots so I don't miss one. Next, let's talk a little bit about storyboards. And these are something that I really don't do that often. Like for example, here's the Blue Ridge. You can see it's literally just like maybe 10 shots for this entire video. And these are shots that are both crucial to the story and like very technical and need to be executed a very specific way. So for example, this shot where I'm sitting down at my desk and planning out a hike that I go on later in the video. This shot is really important to the story, of course, and it's also very specific in execution. There need to be specific items on the desk. The lighting needs to be done a certain way. As you can see, I'm literally just drawing on index cards. It's not fancy because it doesn't need to be fancy. And you can see I'm also writing, you know, some additional little notes around the edge just about you know once again the same thing i might put on the shot list like how i'm gonna light the scene what lens i'm gonna use just little notes about the different props that need to be on the desk for this shot a lot of the time i'll also begin storyboarding a shot that i'm not completely sure about yet so i might have a vague idea for what i want the shot to be but not have the specifics figured out so i just start drawing on index cards and through that process i can usually figure out a little more and be able to visualize what I want that shot to look like. I feel like it could be kind of cool to like dive into these and show you like a more detailed look at how I storyboard and some of the stories behind, you know, how we actually took these index card drawings and turned them into actual shots in the final video. So if that's something that you would like to see a separate video about and dive a little deeper into that topic, leave a comment so I know you're interested and I'll make that one soon. I feel like that could be pretty interesting. So at this point, I mean, you've pretty much done it. And now it's time to shoot. Of course, you never know in the field when you're gonna have service or not have service. So it's important before you go to make your documents offline or you can just screenshot them if you wanna be lazy. But more importantly, you need to keep in mind before you go out to shoot a travel video that things are always going to go wrong on location. Of course, with everything I've talked about in this video, it's so important to get this shoot down to a science as much as you possibly can to plan out and know all the ins and outs, every detail of this project and of this shoot so that when it comes time to start recording, you can focus entirely on just executing what you've already planned out. But you also need to be aware, be prepared and be comfortable knowing 
that it's never gonna go to plan. You need to be able to adjust your shoot based on the weather, based on your gear not working, any completely unexpected event that could happen on location, you literally never know. Knowing how to adjust and make the most of whatever goes wrong on location is something I'm kind of considering making a separate video about. So if that's a topic you would be interested to dive a little deeper into, let me know and I'll work on that one soon. As daunting as all of this stuff can be, I would say take it as an opportunity to be even more creative with the work you do and do more than just show people dope ass spots and views around a location, show them a story and make a video that just has so much more depth to it. And of course, as with just about any video I make on this channel, this is not how to plan a travel video, this is how I plan a travel video. So if you have a different process and different advice, feel free to share that below in the comments and we can all learn a little bit of something new from each other. Once again, if you want access to raw footage from my videos, longer extended tutorials, and of course, the pre-production outline document from my recent film, The Blue Ridge, there's a link in the description where you can become a channel member and get access to all of those perks. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new from it. If you did, do feel free to share your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload new videos just like this every single week, and I'm also doing a lot more right now on Instagram. Like, you're missing out on a whole other like part of the work that I'm doing online if you're not following me on Instagram. So, at Aiden Robbins, if you wanna join in on that community as well. All that being said, that's all for now. Keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.